Hey guys, we've got ourselves a box full of parts. What kind of parts you say? Well, they're all front end parts. Everything we need to rebuild the front end on this truck, excluding our lowering kit. Tonight we're going to be doing some primer and paint on the front floors and getting ready for tearing apart these rocker panels. So if you remember in the last video we used this product called Rust Off, it's a rust converter and we sprayed it on to the surface of the floor. It turned everything kind of white, almost a purplish color. You might not be able to tell in the camera, but it is ready for paint right now. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be just giving one last little wipe down. We're going to spray it with some primer and when that dries we're going to get some black paint on it. Why are we using black? Well for now that's all I have. Then we'll spray it with the final coat of the matching buckskin paint. We're going to get some of that mixed up with that local car quest and hopefully it'll match the paint enough that at least in the floors in there you're never going to see it because it's going to be covered anyway. But down the bottom of the rocker panels and cab corners we'll only have to paint up to that bottom trim and it should match pretty good. So, so let's get the primer and the paint on, two coats of each. Okay, so there we go. We've got two coats of uh, primer and paint on these floor pans. Yes, they still look a little bit rough. However, you got to remember, this is going to be a budget build on this truck. So one of the things that we're not going to be doing is we're not going to be touching the paintwork. Well, we're not going to be painting the truck, let's Even say. Even though we will be doing something with the cab corners and rocker panels, we want that to at least match the color on the truck. And uh, the big thing is, is we're not going to be sending this off to the body shop and having a $10,000, $12,000 paint job done on it. And as we go along, there's going to be a few different times during this build where I'm going to tell you cheaper ways of doing things than maybe the way that I've done them. For instance, the kit that I bought to lower this truck, you don't have to go that expensive necessarily. Uh, but if you're going to be lowering it as low as I'm going, sometimes you don't have much of a choice. So for instance, you could use just coil springs in the front, which would give you a maximum of three inches of drop. In the rear, you could use blocks, and if you only went about four inches in the back, you could probably get away with not having to C-notch the frame. I had approximately $365 in value on rewards points on a credit card that allowed me to upgrade my drop kit to the package that I bought which is going to allow me to do the six inches in the rear and the four inches in the front. But like I said, you can do it cheaper. As far as the front end parts on the truck goes, I bought everything that I'm going to need. I'm not necessarily going to use it all, but let's take a look at what I got. So I've got two inner tie rods, two outer tie rods, and the sleeves, the adjuster sleeves that hold those two pieces together. We've got an idler arm, a pitman arm, we've got lower ball joints, We've got uh, control arm bushings for both sides, so left and right. The upper control arms, I was able to buy the whole control arm with ball joint and new bushings for $36 American each on Rock Auto. So it, it's hardly justifiable to go buy all those parts and put everything together versus buying just the control arm. The lower control arm I couldn't do that for because, well, A, I couldn't find one for a half ton. They were all three quarter ton and B, they were considerably more expensive. But Jason, why didn't you use all Moog parts for your front end? Well, again, at my local CarQuest, they offer an economy line of hard parts that also have a lifetime warranty, and in this case, it's called DriveWorks. So all these parts, even though they were half the price of the Moog, they're still lifetime warranty. So normally, if I was doing a regular build, I would put Moog parts on everything, but in this case, because it is a budget build, I'm able to save a considerable amount of money by going with the off-brand. I will have all the part numbers listed for these in the description box below so that you guys can go and take a look at them and see if you can find out uh, some cheaper parts. All of this right here normally would have been somewhere in the vicinity of about $400 if I went with the Moog brand. Because I went with the DriveWorks, I've got less than 200 bucks tied up into everything. And the same thing goes when we're talking about the budget as far as the drivetrain goes. Will we LS swap this truck? Well, maybe. But for now, 
We are probably going to keep everything as is under the hood for now. We will put some exhaust on it just because the exhaust is hack as it sits right now. But it runs good, it sounds quiet, it's not knocking, all the gears are there, transmission fluid smells good, the oil is crystal clear. As long as we keep up with adding oil to it, then we should get several miles out of this before we really have to start worrying about reliability. There's nothing on here right now besides the brakes that would have kept me from driving this back from New York. So that is what's going to keep us under budget when it comes to building this truck. So some people are going to say, well, Jason, you really never set a budget. Well, in my mind, I did. I might not have shared it with you guys, but in my mind, I'm thinking that $4,000 is not that unreachable. And the reason why I say that is because we got a good drivetrain already. The front end, even though we may replace most of them when we do the drop kit, well, it's not that big of a deal. Those were inexpensive parts. I paid 2,500 bucks for the truck. I got lots of spare parts, even as far as the body panels go. So I'm already ahead of the game. The biggest expense was the drop kit. And even though I saved 20% because it was a Black Friday deal, I also had $365 in rewards money to use towards it. I realistically only have about 300 bucks tied up into that entire kit. So again, we're keeping under budget with the parts that we've got here, with the parts that came with it, and with the drop kit. So far, I don't think we've barely crested 3,200 bucks. That leaves us a little bit of a buffer for some unknowns as we move along. So now that we've got all that out of the way, talking about the budget, now it's time to start tearing in to those rockers. It's not gonna happen tonight. It'll probably happen over the weekend, but because of the magic of film, you guys will see it in just a few seconds. So we've made it back out to the shop and we're working on Dale again today. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working on the passenger side. We're gonna cut up the uh, rocker panels, cab corners and such so that we can start making room for the replacements. I think the best thing we should be doing right now is getting the door off the hinges. I've already started doing that. We got one more bolt to take out. So let's take the door off and give ourselves some more room. So now I think the next thing to do is to get the box out of the way. There's, I believe, eight bolts, I could be wrong, that hold it up onto the frame. We're gonna get underneath, get those bolts off, and then we're gonna lift the box out of the way so that we're able to work down in here. The only thing is, is I'm gonna need some help for that. I'm here, Junior's upstairs, and we may need a couple of other guys to get that box lifted off and out of the way. So I'm gonna make a few phone calls, but in the meantime, we'll get the bolts undone and get all the wires unplugged and the fuel tank, then we'll be able to lift it off when I get the manpower. So now that we've got the box off the back of the truck, that gives us access to the cab corner. I wanna take a second to show you from the top side, once again, just how good a shape this frame is in. So the first thing we noticed was a little bit of weeping around the top of the fuel tank. So we will have to address that before we put the box back on. But just look at how clean and dry everything is here. The worst part of the whole thing is this cross member. It's a little bit scaly, so we will take the wire brush to that, clean it up. But all the bolts that need to come out for the lowering kit shouldn't be any issue. They should come out fairly easy without any cutting. But look, you can still see remnants of the original paint on that frame. I can't get over it. I'm still amazed by how clean this truck is. From the top side of the exhaust, you can see the muffler is uh, likely going to be hacked off here. There's a hole right there. So I think what we'll do before we put the uh, box back on is we'll just end up cutting that off until we can get it back to the shop and put a real exhaust system on it. Once again, you can see where all the remnants of the tree grime was on this truck. We cleaned it off here, but we couldn't reach down and behind the box, but just look at how bad the truck was. The, the whole truck looked like that, if you don't remember. Go back into the second video in this playlist and you will see just how bad it really was before we cleaned it. Also, by having the box off, it should give us a heck of a lot more clearance and room to work when we go to put that lowering kit on back here. So without further ado, it's time to start making a few cuts and get in 
to the real dirty mess of cutting these cab corners and rocker panels off. So guys, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to establish just how much of this rocker panel is gone. Obviously there's a big gaping hole here, but I can stick my hand up in there and I can feel the bottom side of this rocker panel and it feels smooth. So that tells me that this part is still in pretty good shape. As we roll over the edge, we're getting into the CD stuff. And then even down here, you can see it's just like Swiss cheese. So we're probably going to have to come right to the end over here. All I'm doing is exploratory surgery, so to speak. I'm trying to come over here where I think the metal is still good, where we can kind of cut off doing the rocker panel, because I don't necessarily want to have to go all the way up into the fender and put the whole panel on if I don't have to. If I can come over here and do it just to this point, and then come over here and do it just to that point, I'll do it. And then under here, we're doing the same thing. We're trying to see where the rust goes. It looks like we're basically coming down here like so, and we're gonna be able to cut in right about here somewhere. Cut out all that bad stuff, and that will also give us a good look at the inside of the inner rocker as well, and we'll be able to patch those little spots with the panels uh, that we have. As we come over here to the cab corner, same thing. I started grinding down here and kept coming up until I saw good metal. There's a few little picks right here, so I think we're going to be able to come right about where I stopped grinding and come around the corner. Same thing. We started low, came up high, and we run into a little bit of a rust spot here, so we'll be able to take the cutter and go right along there and around there. We'll probably come right down here at this seam. That way we don't have to deal with too much with these uh, spot welds and all that stuff. I'm just going by what little bit of experience I have with helping Dad do some of these rocker panels on different vehicles and some of the different ways that you can do it. I'm never gonna say that the way I'm doing it is right, but at the very least, it's gonna be done and it will be done uh, satisfactory to me and it will still be safe. And that's the main goal is to make sure everything's safe. So that is all the time we have for this episode. When we come back, we're gonna carry on right where we were uh, today and finish up on these rocker panels. If you guys want your very own old car auto guy t-shirts, just like this one, or the new Dale T that's up on the screen right now, you can go to my Spreadshirt store, which is the first link in the description box down below, and get one for yourself. They're only 20 bucks, and I think it's 20 49 and they ship within a few days. You can have them, hopefully, in time for Christmas. Uh, but if not, you can get one where it support the channel because all those proceeds are going to go right back into Project Dale. So I'm going to keep on working here a little while and uh, I'll have the camera with me so I'll start up another episode for you guys to catch up on for next time. So stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.